Now, let's see what we have here again. Can't really tell. This one started nesting inside a little bit, perhaps because this, this uh, straw was not flush against the back of the house. Uh, but this, this front edge doesn't seem to have any holes, so I don't see any chalcid wasps. So let's see. Well, the very, uh, the very last, or I should say the first one the female um, laid, the first egg did hatch. You can see this little larvae, it's all dried up now, ate quite a bit of its pollen store, but for some reason uh, did not thrive. Maybe it got knocked off of this resource, or you just never know. That happens quite frequently, though. But next to that one, it looks to me that there are some beautiful, healthy-looking cocoons. Again, nice big females. So we'll put them out in our gently in our little row here. Nice mud plugs. I keep those in case people want to know what, what they look like when I go to speak at schools and stuff. So again, gorgeous females and nice. Um, uh, oops, sorry, Bucko, you're out of here. But at least your brothers and sisters made it. So that's three and four, five. Six females, and it looks like these three little ones at the, near the outer edge are males. So again, we've got a female that laid quite a few more um, females, or fertilized the eggs to become females deliberately, and uh, the eggs that she did not fertilize are male. So six female and three males. No hole there, no discernible hole there, uh, no obvious holes in this nesting straw, but you do see that these two stains probably mean that those two larvae did not develop, or they, they might be just maybe not even hatch from the egg. That's one reason it's very important to have your house mounted in a very stable location because if any kind of wind or if they get knocked by anything the the egg or the very small uh, larvae will become dislodged so they can't crawl back to their food supply and of course they starve to death. This one looks pretty good. This looks like a nice female. Unfortunately next to it is a nice pollen um, ball they call it where the mother has the nectar and the pollen mixed and if you might just be able to see a teeny tiny little, this is actually the, the, I don't know, if it looks like that's just the egg. It didn't even get to the, to the um, pupa or, or larvae or pupa stage, just a little teeny. And that, she can see where she inserted it right into the nectar source, but it just didn't survive for whatever reason. But the main thing is when you do this is that it, you can compare the size and so you can see very clearly which ones are female and which ones are male. Sometimes these females will be quite a bit smaller than that, but the males will be even smaller still. Sometimes the female will lay nothing but males, a whole straw of males, and sometimes she'll put a couple males at the end and the females will be in the middle, but that's very, that's very unusual. Hi! There's my neighbors thinking, boy, she's crazy out there talking to herself. Maybe they're right. You know, of course, as the female gets older and she gets tired out, or maybe the uh, resources aren't as great, uh, end of the season, you know, she starts to give less, less and less provisions or, or is able to gather fewer and fewer provisions. So the less pollen they have and nectar, you know, which is what they live on, of course, the pollen is their protein source and the nectar is their source of carbohydrates. So when she collects all this, takes her a long time and um, if she only can like this much for one and this much for the other you can tell this one's going to be end up to be a bigger bee so usually she does collect more for the females you can actually see the egg on both of these but she does collect more for the females and that's why females are larger 
the, these uh, straws are specially manufactured so that when you put them together they are one one sixteenth of an inch thick and that will prevent almost any insect especially the chalcid wasps are the only ones that can really have the ovipositor that could possibly uh, make holes in these but you'll see that none of the ones from me that I have manufactured will will get holes in them. Or I, there is a chalcid wasp actually that is out there that can penetrate three quarters of an inch of wood with its ovipositor. So I guess occasionally you might find one, but that's very unusual. So it's very important to have this combination, and there is a big reason for it. And preventing chalcid wasps is, is the reason. So let's see what else we have in here. Female, another female. I love it, I must say. I love the female. I'm prejudiced. <laughs> oh, we like the guys too, but let's face it, without the females, well, without the males, <laughs> we need all of us. That's the lesson here. These are looking good. All right, so what do you think? I'd say five, six beautiful females. This one, no, once I clean him off a little bit, he's looking kind of smallish. And this guy's a little guy. So there you go. Again, you know, female, male, pretty easy to see the difference. Okay, well, and of course the, the males usually emerge in the spring a few days before the females and feed and gain strength a little bit and they just hang out outside the bee house waiting for the females to emerge so they can mate and which they do with gusto I must say sometimes the female is barely out of the hole and they go wham and she gets slammed to the ground <laughs> it's kind of amazing but nevertheless it works and then they they uh, mate and sometimes the female will mate with uh, hopefully you know two or three different males so that the you know genetically um, it's very beneficial and the males just live for a couple days after that and then they die so they you know I always like to say they probably die with a smile on their face but they mate for five or six days and then they're done whereas the female has just begun her little adventure and takes her about a day or so for her after mating for her ovaries to mature and then she starts this whole process of gathering mud gathering nectar gathering pollen mixing it together her pollen of course collects on her body on her scopa it's called it's like a real thick brushy hair set of hairs on her a underside of her abdomen and the whoops sorry about that and the nectar she actually has a, a special nectar stomach they call it and she collects the nectar and in this little stomach and then she regurgitates it once she gets inside the uh, nesting straw mixes it with the pollen and that becomes the pollen ball then when you see her backing in she backs in to get the pot to wipe the pollen off her body as well, but most of the time she's backing in, she is going in to lay an egg on top of the pollen supplies or the pollen ball. 